It's the secondary break, baby. Season two. <laughs> Season We're two. We're back, baby. We're back. I'm Graham Bunn. If you are just joining us, uh, or if you, you know, obviously I'm a little bit biased towards the people that were with us for season one. Welcome back as well. Basketball season is upon us. We've been busy and yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we're going to talk about break down the, the game, but I think expectations and we got a massive one tomorrow. Uh, I don't even know if you want to broach it, but we'll, we'll talk about Carolina, Kansas first matchup since the national title game, which still haunts me in my dreams. But uh, before we get started, I want to say go Heels. We take down Elon uh, 90 to 76 in a much closer game than that score, I think, is reflective of. Good things, bad things, but it's the start of the season. I I'm super excited. RJ Davis is back and has become one of my all time favorite Carolina Tar Heels. So I don't know. How you feeling early, man? Did you get a chance to see the the game? And what are your thoughts on the roster or maybe the starters? Any and all things Carolina Tar Heels men's basketball? Yeah, at this point in the season, I'm just excited that it's it's basketball season, uh, pro and college. But, you know, for me, it's 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 what I love. You know, I mean, I love a bunch of different sports, but, you know, college basketball is so near and dear to my heart. Um, and it's just an exciting time to see, you know, how does this team come together? Where are we now? You know, and then, you know, how does this, how's this going to evolve and how's the season going to play out? And mm -hmm. you know, I just love the ride, you know, some years are better than others. Yeah. So we'll talk about how we think this year is going to play out, but you know, yeah, I'm just definitely. excited to see how this team, uh, matures over the course of the year, what Hubert does with it. I think this team, given this personnel um, is going to require a lot of coaching mm -hmm. and a lot of um, adjustments, maybe even from game to game in terms of lineups and matchups and how do we play? You know, this isn't a, a classic Carolina team where, where it feels like you, know, you sort of have positional size everywhere, you know, one through five um, that, you know, you just sort of roll out and play your way and make everybody adjust to you. Um, I feel like in this 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 year's team, we've got some real strengths, but we probably have some holes. And how Hubert and the staff deal with that is going to be fascinating to watch as, as a fan base, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm a lifelong basketball fan, and I always found it super interesting that in the NBA playoffs, certain starting lineups would change based on the series. So this series, we're really going to go with this player because it's a better matchup for us. I feel like that's never really trickled down too much into college basketball. But I do feel like with Hubert's pro background and his time in the NBA, with our roster, we are going to see multiple different starting lineups. And not because someone played bad and we have to replace them, but we are making active adjustments on the fly to what matchups suit the team's needs best on that given night. Um, especially with the elevation of Seth Trimble. I mean, you got to give that kid all the credit in the world, tested the waters of the portal, obviously wanted to have a bigger role in college basketball, decided he could do it at Carolina, came back, and, you know, left no doubt in the preseason. I'm sure in workouts and in the summer and in pickup and all those things that we're not privy to because we don't have access to see some of that stuff, he left no doubt before the preseason even started. But after watching that kid play in the preseason, he kind of made it known, I'm a, a starter at Carolina. And, you know, I think he he beat out some other guys that might have had a leg up because they rounded out the roster a little bit better across the board, and maybe they'll start some. But, you know, Seth Trimble really adjusted and, and kind of played his way into forcing Hubert's hand of like, all right, well, we're going to go small ball some nights, and uh, we're going to start that way. So, yeah, super exciting. What are you thinking about the lineup? I mean, we can get into the the Elon game. Uh, I didn't think there were any major takeaways outside of as as well and as highly touted as we are at the guard position. I, I wish we had defended the three a little bit better, but it's the first game. Adrenaline was high. Guys were, were knocking down shots, and I think most of the shots were a little bit long because everybody was a little amped up and the season's back. Uh, I didn't really have any massive takeaways. What about you? It's hard to read too much in, into it for all the reasons you just said. I agree with you. I made the same note that if we're going to play this small ball lineup, one of our strengths needs to be our three-point field goal percentage defense. Correct. That obviously didn't show up against Elon. 
hard to know if that's going to be a trend. I, I think that Hubert's going to get into the guys. I mean, the way this team is going to have to play defense with this smaller lineup is we have to create havoc and get turnovers. We're going to have to have a ton of ball pressure and make it difficult for people um, and then gang rebound on the defensive end. And we didn't we didn't totally execute, I think, on that uh, that strategy against Elon yeah. and gave them you know way too many open looks. A couple of the ones they made were pretty difficult, but but they also sure. had a bunch of open open ones too. So I don't think it's like they were just lucking a bunch of threes in on us. Yeah. So that's that's going to have to improve. Um, I, I think you know where they did not test us, where Kansas will. And I think mm-hmm. it's going to be fascinating to see how we play this is, you know, they didn't have a big, they were just throwing the ball into in the post like right. Hunter Dickinson. And we really have had the luxury of the last few years, particularly last year is, is Baycott's defense, I think really went to another level of, we were one of the few teams in the country who didn't really have to double, you know, we, we stayed at home, let Baycott, you know, handle everybody pretty much one-on-one and he did a good job with that. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that anymore. And so what adjustment do we make? Do we double the post a lot, you know, and then get into scramble mode? Are we going to press more to make it more of a full full court game? Uh, yeah, that, those those things I think we'll, we'll learn a lot more tomorrow night. Yeah, I also, uh, you know, just to reiterate, the, the defensive schemes, especially for the personnel that we're going to be playing, is actively going to be determined by the op- opposing team's roster. So... Kansas, I, I could see us starting Washington and Lubin both to start the game off just to, you know, combat some of the size that Kansas has. They rolled, I believe they played Howard. They rolled Howard by 30. And I looked it up. They're incredibly deep. Uh, I, I think they had like, and again, it's, it's, uh, we played a lot of, we play a lot of guys early too. And, and a lot of rosters get dwindled down. But Kansas roster, I, I would put that up there with Arkansas, Alabama, Yukon. Iowa State. I don't know about Duke yet. Uh, those are the five best rosters I think in America when it goes top to bottom. But we'll see. You know, I mean, AJ Store was a massive get in the portal, and he played 15 minutes for Kansas, and that you know that's not a ton for a guy that was a star at Wisconsin. So we'll see. And and I'm with you. I think it's going to be interesting. I, I don't think we're going to know exactly how the team's going to play on a given night until we're five, ten minutes into the game. Yeah, their mix of talent and experience. I mean, I mean, you you have to put them right up there for for a chance to win a national championship. This is a year. If I were a Kansas fan, where I'd be saying it's national championship or bust. Mm-hmm. We've had those years as, as as Carolina fans. It doesn't always yeah. work out, but you know. Dewan Harris, I feel like has been around forever. Um, I'm sure mm-hmm. they feel the same way about RJ. Yeah. Uh, but him, him at point guard, he's a steady hand, great defender. Rylan mm-hmm. Griffin uh, tore us up uh, at Alabama in an NCAA tournament game. Um, great shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, AJ Store, great athlete in the on the wing. And KJ Adams is is also a great athlete at the four. And then, of course, Hunter at 7 2. Yeah. And what you know, it feels like he's been around college basketball forever, too, as does KJ Adams. So just that that mix of experience and talent, positional mm-hmm. size. And like you said, they're deep. I mean, they picked up Zeke Mayo. Um, I think it's mm-hmm. North Dakota State, one of the Dakota states, but he was a he was a big transfer guy, a couple of McDonald's All Americans. So yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 they're one of those loaded. years where they're loaded. <laughs> they're loaded you know, yeah. so we're going into fog against an experienced loaded team. You know, we're 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 I don't know how many times the last you know few years we've been given up seven and a half points. So I think that line you know shows you this is going to be a tough one for us to win. Yeah. Uh, but I think I think it's an important game for us to learn a lot about ourselves, try out a, a few things. I'm not necessarily expecting the win, but I think I think it can be a, a valuable game for us, and obviously, um, hopefully, strengthen us down the road as we move into the ACC in a month. Yeah. I, you know. I'm going to show my doomsday mentality here. I, I'm afraid it's going to get ugly just because we have a lot of we're, – we're leaning on the freshmen a lot to to be impact players this year, and I do believe they are 1,000% very capable of being high-end impact players, but they need experience. You know, They need some reps, and this is going to be a very new, hostile environment. I'm sure they played in some amazing AAU tournaments, some amazing high school games, and I'm sure they've seen some, some gyms that – you know, me as a high school player never saw, but at Kansas is 
it's a different monster, especially in a year where, like you said, I think the fan base is really national championship or bust. That's hard for me to say because they obviously beat us in the national championship game and we gave up the largest halftime lead in the national championship game's history. If Baycott doesn't turn his ankle and he stays healthy, I, I think we, we get that done. But we're here. Uh, I'll be interested to see if Hubert shortens the rotation at all. You know, we're away from home and he, and he goes with a little bit more experience heavy. Um, and, and, I don't, and maybe that, yeah, go ahead. I don't think he's going to not, not this early. I think, I think mm -hmm. I don't, it's not to say he's not going to try to win this game. And maybe if it's close down the stretch, he'll shorten the mm -hmm. bench. But yeah. I think he just views it as too important at this stage to get the freshmen and some of these other guys that we're going to need contributions from minutes in this type of environment. And I think he's mm -hmm. going to view it as more as much as a learning experience as a chance, you know, is really trying to win the game. Yeah, I, I'm talking about protecting them, though, oh, you know, yeah, you yeah, know, putting guys out there and in, you know, protecting their confidence. And these guys are alpha, you know, they're alpha players and. They're used to going out and playing well. And so sometimes it's hard. You know, you're you're a freshman, you're on campus, you're jacked up, you want to be a difference maker, and then things aren't clicking and you start to get in your head, you start to make changes soon. So I, I'm just saying from from the coaching standpoint of like, hey, I'm not going to put you in a tough position to to play you 25 minutes and go one for 10 because you're you're just not used to one, we're on the road, you're a freshman, you're playing with all new guys that are here at Carolina. Not that they they don't need the reps to develop 1,000%. I just meant like bringing them along at a pace that was more conducive to their overall success and development. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. And, you know, if the game, uh, if the game starts getting away from us or, you know, like you said, they're not playing particularly well. But, yeah, I don't think either of those two guys is really expected to score that much, at least yeah. not at this point in time in the, se in the season. It seems like Ian feels a little bit of pressure to be a scorer just because he's so electrifying. I mean, he's getting shots up and he's hunting his shot, and and so he should. I mean, that's what made him the player that he is. So, yeah, and I would like to see him attack the rim, and I, yeah, he's he's electric. I mean, he is electric, yeah. end to end. He can. Yeah. I mean, he is athletic, going to the hole. He's he's mm -hmm. he's explosive and. You know, I, I'd like to see him do that and not settle for the three. I'm not saying don't take the, the the open three when it comes. He should, but I think he. I'd love to see him have the mentality of getting to the rim. Drake a little bit too. You know, I think um, both of them have a chance to get to the rim, um, and of course, you know, they're going to be great in transition. I think you know one of the keys to this season overall is going to be tempo, and. Oh, uh, I, I mean, that, that was on full display game one. They made it a point like it. And I think they pressed it a little too much. I I, I would like them to throttle it back a little bit. I know that's not going to happen, but. And the good thing is I think Kansas will run with us. So I, I think believe you know, so. it's going to be up and down. I think it's going to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that may may help us. It may hurt us. But, you know, I thought I think when Elon went to that zone, slowed us down, um, mm -hmm. it, it made it much harder for us. But when this team gets out and runs, uh, I think they're going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. Yeah, I mean, I like mathematically, you know, the, the game is trending in such an analytical space that I, I, I like the math behind, let's get more possessions. I'm going to bet on Carolina. I'm going to bet on our backcourt, our guards, and our scoring prowess over uh, a longer or higher volume possession game than I would if it was shorter. Uh, I believe that there's less room for error. There's more room for, okay, we're going to give up some secondhand you know, putbacks, and, and we're going to, unfortunately, in the half court, struggle defensively at times to to bang with guys. And, and maybe Van Lubin and, and Jalen Washington proved me wrong. I hope they do. Uh, I just feel like there's not a lot of girth down there. And so, you know, more possessions, more offenses. We're going to shoot a lot of threes this year. We got a lot of guys. I mean, Seth Trimble looks like a very capable three-point shooter, which I would not have said that seven months ago. So Elliot Cadeau as well. And I think that the as a shooter, Hubert Davis and the whole staff basically is like, all right, well, we're gonna we're gonna give up some some down low, but our roster predicates that we play this way and we're gonna get some threes up and we're gonna have more possessions than we've ever had here at Carolina under this regime. Yeah, I almost feel like for us to, you know, I'm not sure this is a final four capable team, but if we were to evolve into that, it needs to be something similar to to some of those Villanova teams yeah where they would you know they played pretty small 
you know, but they had a, a decent anchor down low. They didn't necessarily play through him on offense, but they just right. had those great guards. And but defensively, you know, they were able to make up for that. You know, they would trap and they would swarm and double team and get steals and turnovers. And and they, you know, they had some very good defensive teams, you know, obviously on those national championship runs. And so I think yeah. that's 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 the model that I have in my head that I think can work for this team. Yeah. But it's different than than what we're used to watching as Carolina fans. And so, you know, it's it's hard to know exactly how all that's going to play out. Yeah, it's only one game, so sample size. Obviously, you can't even you can't make any assertions off of the Elon game. It's it's one game. But one of the things that did stand out to me, I felt like the guards were out high pressuring and making the guards from Elon, who were you know those twins were incredibly athletic and they were very capable players. There's good players all over the place, especially at the guard spot. You know, once you get up into the Power Five, I feel like a lot of the difference is the bigs and the length of some of the wings. Guards, there's great guards everywhere. And so I was impressed with, you know, Elliot got up under the, the point guard and, and Trimble obviously is known for his defense. RJ was pressing up, you know, really picking up higher than the three-point line and, and sitting down in that chair. So, you know, maybe I'm sure Hubert is, is emphasizing it, but I, I felt like it really showed the other night. I did too, and I thought the two freshmen played – pretty well on defense, showed a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there was a stretch, I think it's after the second TV timeout, Hubert clearly like lit into them about the ball pressure. And there was like a five minute stretch where we played with real defensive intensity, got into them, turned them over. And I yeah. think we went on like an 11 0 run or something like that in that four minute stretch. Mm -hmm. You know, last year when we really turned the corner and then you know through end of December, through January when I forget exactly you know what our record was, but we went on that run uh, that set up the ACC championship. You know, what I was so impressed by in that run was we were playing every possession defensively, mm -hmm. really like I've never seen a Carolina team do. Mm -hmm. And the question is, will we do it again? You know, do we, do we have, is that going to be part of who we are as a program? You know, can Hubert get these guys to lock, lock in? Cause like that five minute stretch, we played lights out defense, but then, you know, in the second half, we got up by double digits. We of course sort of did not really focus, you know, you're playing Elon. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a little, little hard to read too much into it, but um, you know, I think that's going to be the key, to, you know, from this team being pretty good to, to being great is, you know, on the perimeter, are we able to maintain that pressure and intensity possession by possession? Um, you know, otherwise, I just don't, you know, I think this team is going to be, you know, middle of pack, you know, first weekend NCAA tournament team. Oh, what are you doing to me, man? I, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying if, I'm saying if, I just, I just think we don't, we don't have enough, like, sort of dominant, players you know to just yeah. to to just say yeah you know we're going to turn it on you know a couple of defensive stretches here or there and in, in games and we've had teams like that where we could win that way i just don't think mm -hmm. that's going to be the makeup of this team and yeah. so it's either through full court pressure or you know intense ball pressure on the perimeter you know we're gonna have to multiple multiple efforts on rotations you know out of double teams in the post those the, that's hard defense to play as you, you know, as you know. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, that, but I think that's, that is what it's going to take. Now I think we have the perimeter depth to do it. So mm -hmm. I don't think we need everybody to play 35 minutes a game. Mm -hmm. um, and so the question is, will our perimeter depth allow us to play with that type of intensity and, and offset maybe some of the weaknesses this team has? Yeah. Two things though. I do believe offensively with the shooters and definitely the evolution of Elliot Cadeau and, and Seth Trimble, we're able to offset some of the deficiencies that we have defensively. And the first thing I thought of after the first half I watched the Elon game is I really hope, and I don't know if they do, I don't know if, if college coaches do this, but I was hoping that Hubert Davis would take a look at our roster and, and definitely the size of our roster and maybe watch some game film or go back and revisit some of the teams that have had just unbelievable success in the NCAA tournament from mid-major programs. Because size-wise, that's what we look like on paper. You know, we look like a, the Northern Iowa teams and the Gonzaga teams from the early 2000s. And, you know, some of these non-Creighton. Creighton has had teams that were constructed the way Carolina's team is constructed now. Now, I don't know 
you know, will that hold up in conference? Because the ACC is so large and there are going to be some tough matchups size wise. But when it comes to the NCAA tournament, spreading the floor, high volume shooting, you know, there's been teams that are built like UNC right now that have had immense success. The Butler teams, you know, Butler's, they had they had one of those bigs when they went back to back national championship games, but they weren't any better than Jalen Washington. So, you know, it's doable for sure. It's been done several times in college. Oh, yeah, there is absolutely a, a blueprint out there for how to win with this type of lineup. And we've got great guards. And if Cadeau and Trimble continue to play like they've played in the preseason and they play against Elon, yeah. I mean, this team, you don't want any of that in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. RJ didn't have um, a RJ, great game. No, I mean, no. he, he had a he had a nice spurt when we needed it, of course. And he's he's one of the best Star Hills to ever lace them up. But he, he did not have a great shooting day. I mean, he made his first three, and then he, I think he missed like the next six or seven, you know? Yeah, I, you know, I almost think to like that Miami team that made the Final Four run a couple of years ago, you know, where they were, you know, they were getting out and pressing and they were creating havoc on the defensive end and they just had guys all over the floor making shots and plays and were spreading people out. And, mm-hmm. and they're, you know, it's a really fun brand of basketball to watch. And so from a fan perspective, I think it could be, it could be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to uh, be very different for Carolina yeah. fans, especially traditional Carolina fans that are used to playing seeing two bigs. I mean, Jalen Washington's going to take a lot of threes this year, I feel like, because he's going to space the floor. They're, they're going to have nobody in the paint, uh, hopefully more than half the time on offense, just because we don't really have that traditional post presence. So I don't think we play into the hands of other people. Uh, we I, I say we stretch the fives out and make them defend outside. Well, we we went to the the Withers um, Drake Powell you know five four combination. I think very briefly at the end of the first half, mm-hmm. but that's a lineup that you know I would like to see and see if that can work um, with the extended minutes because um, I think that could be really dynamic. You're sort of switchable one through five almost. Um, you know, and against certain teams, I think we could play that lineup and and play it effectively. So I, I think that's going to be one of the, the fascinating themes uh, this year is a lot of years you go into it, you know, one through five, what the roles are, who's going to get minutes. You know, maybe there's a little bit of question about, you know, six through eight and who's coming off the bench first and that sort of thing. But, but this year, like you said at at the beginning of the show, it could be really dynamic. It could differ a lot from night to night um, and probably should, you know, it it really probably should. And then the question is going to be how much can we impose our will and, you know, how much can we get a mismatch on the offensive end where we could overcome, you know, potentially a mismatch on on the defensive end? But, you know, I mean, teams are doing it at the NBA level now. I mean, you know, the yeah. death lineup of Golden State, mm-hmm. you know, there's all sorts of examples out there where it's, you know, five out or one in and four out. And so, you know, there's a model. The question is, you know, Carolina's never historically done that. Yeah, you know, we've we've tried to you know beat people up on the boards and generally had more size, so it's just going to be a, a big big shift for us. Yeah, how much do you think Jalen Withers? Because after watching the game versus Elon, it, it just kind of occurred to me. I, I feel like he went untalked about or unspoken about in this off season. Uh, we so much emphasis on all the bigs that we missed out on, and you know, okay, is Jalen Washington really ready to step into a thirty minute? per game player, which he probably won't have to be. But, you know, in the offseason, that was a lot of chatter around that. Jalen Withers, he could be a massive, important, you know, grounding piece for us because he, he's strong enough to defend down low, but also fast enough to to switch on wings. And so I, I think his, his role is only going to expand. Yeah, I was a big Withers fan last year, and I think his role – I mean, he's going to be critical this year, yeah. right? I mean – if he can be that player who can stretch the floor, I, I'm not saying that he's going to make as many threes as Manic, but yeah. when left wide open like he did against Elon to hit a couple of game, you know, mm-hmm. shoot a you know mid 30s, you know high 30s type of clip of of open threes, mm-hmm. and then you know we know what he can do in the open floor, yeah. and we know what he can do, you know, cutting baseline, and you know Cadeau's going to find him for little dump off ducks and dunks mm-hmm. and um you know i think he needs to be in the the dunk spot you know yeah. when we place we're four or five out and yeah. you know let guys penetrate and he's you know i think a good finisher mm-hmm. where we got in trouble last year is when he 
try to initiate offense and that did not go well. So as long as I think he plays, you know, within the role, um, I think, I think it'd be he great. Did, and then he did it again versus Elon. He like came down in and out, moved, went baseline, like up and under reverse, didn't quite make it. I was like, all right, well he, you know, he, he did like three good things in a row. You kind of got to live with that one, but I I'm, I'm with you. I'm like, Oh man, I really hate it when you, when you step outside of that. Uh, and, and, and really he's going to have to step into that role uh, that four role that was a big rebounding role last year. And yeah. in college basketball, you know, it's not just boxing out and rebounding, but, you know, you need everybody to be able to be quick to the ball and and get those long rebounds. That's like Harrison Ingram was the best player in the country. I watched all of last year mm-hmm. reacting and getting to like mid to long rebounds. And you know, yeah, he's getting 10 a game yeah. doing that. And Withers has that type of a- athleticism. So I think, you know, if he can focus on that, he should get, you know, 10 boards a game. And yeah, you know, he's going to have to for us to to have a chance. Yeah, you mentioned the death lineup, and I think a good player comparison is is Andre Iguodala. You know, I think he he brings a lot of the same intangibles to you know length, defensive, you know, scores, you know, at times, but you don't really count on it. So when you get it, it's icing. And I felt like Iguodala, when Golden State was really rocking, he provided that for them. Um, you know, Withers definitely has the capability of guarding the other team's best player outside of maybe a Hunter Dickinson. Uh, and a lot of teams are, are going small at five. So he'll play five some for us, which is is wild to me. But I think he's going to be incredibly important. One of the players I have I was really high on in the offseason and I'm, I'm a little bit worried about, and I was a little bit worried after the first five or six games with Cormac, so this might sound familiar to anybody that watched season one, is Cade Tyson. You know, the body language – with Cade Tyson has not been great for me. Um, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but it's kind of what we do. You know, we're, we're, we're here breaking down the game and, and, and kind of giving projections or our concerns. I'm a little worried about Cade Tyson. I haven't seen, you know, the efficiency that I thought he was coming in with. And, and I was on board and early on the efficiency with Cormac as well. And I don't know if he has the, the heat check factor that Cormac had. I don't know. What do you think? Well, so far, it's hard to be too optimistic. We yeah. just have not seen or critical or critical. Yeah, it's just yeah. Small sample size for sure. He, I mean, he could be Cormac 2.0, and I would love that. Yeah, I, I mean, Cormac was a better defender than I knew he was going to be going into the season, and also and a I just, great leader. Also, yeah, a great, leader. great leader, and and yeah, and by by the end, you know, he was I think finding a stroke. I was surprised given his age, comfort playing in the ACC at that level of basketball, that it seemed like he had a bit of an adjustment you know, coming in and didn't shoot as well as maybe any of us, any of us would have hoped for much of the season. But, but you know, I think by the end, obviously, was a huge contributor. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully Cade can can carve out a role here that that is really valuable. I mean, having someone who's at his size who can shoot at least, you know, the percentage he shot last year would be a huge addition but, I, you know, so far, you know, we just have not not seen it. No, it's a tiny sample size. Yep, small. It looks like it takes him a little longer to get the shot off. It 1,000% well, does. Uh, um, you know, and At so Belmont, that, that's all right. But Yeah, so that's going to be an adjustment, I think, in the ACC. So we're going to have to see, you know, sort of how that plays out over the course of the year. He has shown, you know, willingness to pump fake and try to drive and get to the rim. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, there's a question of, you know, what, what position is he going to defend is, can he defend threes or does he need to play four? Um, and then, and then can he hold up down low? So the, I, I think there's still, still a lot of open questions. Um, but you know, I could also just see Drake Powell being tough to hold off for minutes. Yeah. And you know, well, that I was my next question to you. That was my next question. And so I think, you know, what Hubert's going to do, and, and this is, you know, he's learned this from from Roy and from Dean, is I think, you know, before the ACC, they're going to play 10 guys, you know, 8, 9, 10 guys. He's going to distribute the, the minutes and see who plays well and who takes the minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think there's a chance that, that Cade's minutes shrink probably more than what we thought they would be coming into the year unless he can he can really find that stroke and find that role. But but there's still time. Yeah, I would tell him, you know, it's it ain't rocket science. If you shoot 40%, 38% from three, you're going to play. Those minutes will not go away. If you do not, you know, unfortunately, it, but, th- that's just the – And I think I think you have to say, look, man, 
you have to be prepared to shoot while the ball's in the air. You've got to you've got yeah, to adjust to, to whether or not you're going to be open or not while the ball's coming to you, and then you got to be ready to to fire because if you catch and assess, I mean they're closing no. that out every time, and he's just not going to get that shot off. And I think right yeah. now, you know, you're trying to fit in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to make sure you're taking good he's shots. He's forced when, a few. Like I, yeah, you know, he he yeah. had one three. Like it's very rare that you see a three get blocked into the stands. Right. You Especially know what I mean? Like six eight. Yeah, I, I yeah. get it. You know, people closing out on the corner. This has happened to me before too, and I'm not six eight. But you know, you get the shot up, and and someone gets a fingertip on it, so it falls short or it hits the front of the rim, or you know, maybe it's a foot short and it's an air ball because someone you know kind of touched it. He got it sent into the front row. It's like it, that wasn't even close to getting off. Yeah, and so I mean, I feel like Drake Drake offers a lot more of a floor game and can can do a lot of other things. And so if you're not gonna, too. yeah, so if you're it, yeah if you're not gonna shoot lights out, I think it may be hard to hold him off for those minutes. But but again, I mean, we need him. You know, I mean, we need that that floor spacer. Yeah. I think on this team would be another weapon. Um, and as you know, many good guards as we have to penetrate and kick, like he should get good open looks. He's gonna uh, get the, the same looks Cor season. Cormac got. Yeah, you know, RJ's gonna get doubled. You know, the, Elliot's a great creator. It looks as if he's gonna prove. Now it's gonna have to take five or six games before people really buy into. Okay, he's a viable three point threat, but he looks like he is. I mean, uh, for all intents and purposes, it looks like he put in the work in the off season. And now you can't really sag off, go under, or play him in the paint when he's at the three-point line. He's going to knock a few of them down. So I feel like he's going to get as many good looks as Cormac got. We just need him to be able to make those. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, Cadeau's confident. Trimble's confident. Those guys are shooting like they're supposed to mm -hmm. shoot the ball when they're open. Not like, hey, I, I, I'm not really sure, you know, is this is this really a good shot? I mean, they clearly have the green light. They're looking to attack. And yeah. having that confidence um, and, and hunting your shot, I feel like, and sometimes it's half the battle, and they both seem to be doing that. Um, you know, and – you know, that, that makes them, they're both already quick and good drivers. And obviously if, you know, you have to close out on them hard, um, it's just going to make them that much quicker. And I think we'll also open up the driving lanes, which again, should play into someone like Cade Tyson's hand. So, you know, ho hopefully that, that, that plays out. It's still early. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to, and you use the word electric. Uh, it will probably not get two years of it just because of the way college basketball, but, but watching, Ian's development you know right now you can tell there's just an untapped unlimited amount of potential there but as he gets more comfortable as he's you know kind of finds his groove and knows where to pick his spots I think it's going to be an incredible year to watch someone that's just you know brings something to the table that no one else on the team does offensively now I think Drake has that same potential defensively but you know Ian starts to knock down shots and he's so shifty and can create one on one off the bounce. That if his jump shot's going and you got to close out to him at a respectable distance, he's gonna he's gonna feast and create so many shots for so many other people. And that's just incredible because last year I felt like if RJ wasn't cooking, we really struggled to to score and to play with uh, the the higher end, you know, the Bamas. And so I, I think if Ian can get comfortable, we won't necessarily have to rely on. RJ having a bad game and we lose. You know, I think RJ had a tough game at Georgia Tech. We lose. RJ had a tough game with Bama. We lose. I don't know if that's necessarily the case if Ian gets comfortable. Yeah, I agree. And the nice thing is, you know, people forget, but when you know, RJ came in and, and Love, Caleb Love came in, you know, they had to play as freshmen. You know, they got thrown yeah. into the fire. Yeah. You know, I think we have the luxury now of those guys coming off the bench. They can yeah. ease into games a little bit. I think they yeah. can ease into the season. There's not really, a, I think, a ton of pressure on them. Um, I mean, of just course, the, we need the mock drafts. You know, uh, hopefully, I don't know how that plays into them. Like, hey, man, I need to score 10 a game, or I'm, you know, they're already projecting Ian. He was a, you know, a, a 10 to 15. Now they're, he's at 30. So I don't know how much that plays into his psyche, you know? Yeah. But I think, you know, if I'm them, I'd say, I'd say the model is like how UConn used Stephen Cast Castle last year, mm -hmm. where, you know, he played and played a lot and was a critical part. But they brought him along like pretty slowly. When we played UConn early in the year, you know, he, mm -hmm. he certainly played 
but it, in some ways they almost used him as their defensive stopper on the perimeter. And he wasn't expected to do much on offense was just very much like yeah. a complimentary piece. And yeah, he still got drafted in the lottery. And so the NBA is still going to project on potential and athleticism. And if you do the right things and help the team win, you know, I, I don't think that's going to hurt you in those, in those mock drafts. And so I think that they can, you know, they don't have to come out and score 30 points a game in order to be high picks. Um, yeah. they, they clearly need to progress over the course of the season. Mm-hmm. But, but I, I, I think, I think they're set up to be successful. Um, at least, at least I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with all of that, but you're a grown man and have seen <laughs> a lot of this. They're, they're kids. You know what I mean? You never know what goes into a kid's mind. Like the, the, the pressure that, you put on yourself to perform and they've always been the guy like, all right, cool. Like I don't have to be the guy, but I got to have moments. Like I got to have nights where I'm, I'm cooking a little bit. I've got to have spurts where, yeah, I hit two or three in a row and I get a dunk breakaway. And, you know, so I just hope they don't put too much pressure on themselves because I'm with you. I I don't think it's going to hurt them necessarily down the road. If we bring them along slowly. Yeah. And I think that's probably tougher for uh, Ian than it is Drake. I mean, Drake is going to get drafted to be a three and D guy. Yeah, definitely. And he, and he can show that more easily without hunting shots, you know, whereas definitely. if you're, if you're an attack guard, you know, in the NBA, that's like a harder thing to show at the college level being a role player. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's probably going to be tougher on him to fit in and, and feel like he's both, contributing to the team, but then also, you know, helping himself uh, in front of NBA scouts. Yeah, well, it's also less opportunity. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, there's not going to be as many shots as there are minutes where we need a defensive stopper. Like, Drake is going to have every opportunity to show off his ability to lock down other players and be a 3 and D guy. You know, with Trent, the elevation of Trimble and Elliott being a, you know, a viable offensive option now and RJ just being RJ Davis, you know, Ian's going to have a, a smaller – window of opportunity when it comes to hunting shots so uh, i i agree with you it'll be interesting to watch but i'm already a big ian fan like i there's just something about him that i love watching and i I hope he gets a bunch of minutes and i hope he has success early because i think psyche wise it'll make a massive difference it's not like the talent's not there it's just like okay does he believe in it is he comfortable and are we putting him in a position to continue and have success regularly yeah, and I think the lineups that that Hubert puts him into will be interesting to watch. I mean, you could see a, a lineup where he's almost expected to be the primary scorer or the secondary scorer in that five. Yeah, if and RJ's you know, off the floor, for sure. Definitely. Right, to so put him in as a bit of a microwave and say, all right, Ian, when you're in, I want you to attack, man. Like, yeah, this, these are your minutes. Be aggressive. Like, you don't need to defer to RJ. Yeah. So it'll be, I, we'll, we'll, it'll be interesting to see how that, that plays out. But, but man, if he could come into that role as like a second team primary scorer type of role, mm-hmm. I mean, that would take this team to a whole nother dimension. Yeah. I, I would imagine that's what they're envisioning for him. So it'll be cool to watch. All right. Uh, goals for Friday. What do you, what takeaways are you looking like? Yeah. Hey, I just want us to compete and I want to see this, this, and this. Give me three things that you're looking forward to. It's a big game. I cannot wait for the game. I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'll be honest. I'm nervous, but what are you thinking? So I, I put in four, four keys to the game uh, that I'm looking for. Um, one is how do we guard their bigs? You know, do we try to handle Hunter straight up? You know, are we going to double team and scramble? What are we going to do? Cause I think that's going to tell us a lot. And he may be the best big we play all year. I don't know, but it's still going to, I think going to tell us a lot about how we've thought about this year and how we've been pre- preparing in preseason and, and philosophically how we want to defend. Um, the second one is rebounding. I mean, this is a game where if we don't gang rebound, um, oh, you, know, yeah. we, you know, we could lose this rebounding battle by 10 or 15 and there's no way we're going to win the game. We only out rebounded right. Elon by three. Yeah. So I think we probably have to keep it within five uh, to have a chance to win the game. And can we do that? And you know, is everybody, everybody attacking the boards and are quick to the ball. Um, Three-point field goal percentage defense, this has to be a strength that was not against Elon. Hopefully that was right. an aberration. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to me, you know, we've got to hold them under 30%, um, you know, maybe mid-20s to have a chance to win this game. Agreed. And then my last one is is turnovers. You know, we forced 16 against Elon, only turned the ball over six times ourselves. 
Mm -hmm. Given our size, I think that's the way we have to play and win. Um, we've got to create havoc. We've got to pressure the ball. We've got to get in passing lanes. We've got to get up and down. We've got to get some easy points. We do that with, with ball pressure and maybe press more. And mm -hmm. so can we win the turnover battle? And they've got very good experienced guards, so that's going to be hard yeah. to do. Dewan Harris is not just going to turn the ball over a bunch. Correct. Uh, but but maybe you know if they that we can we can force the the bigs into some turn turnovers and get going the other way. So those would be my four. Yeah, my my two were we have to shoot better than what we allow them to shoot from three points. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel like I've already kind of conceded that we're going to struggle on the boards. So offensively, we offset that by shooting better from three from distance than they will shoot. So I do believe our our three point defensive uh efficiency is going to be a major major factor and then you know just uh relying on guys like rj in the locker room before we even come out there just calming guys down like hey man it's it's just another game like you know everyone's like oh this is our our revenge game for the national title we could win this thing by 50 and it wouldn't be a revenge game for the national title i would trade the national title for an 100 point loss you know, so like that, that's to bet that I, I hate all the national title get back stuff like uh, th that, that ship has sailed. And I, I don't know anybody that wouldn't want a banner. We're not getting that banner back if we go into Lawrence and, and win. So I think RJ just settling everybody down and taking the lead and saying, you know, hey, guys, like uh, I've been here before. You're going to be in bigger games than this and we're going to be in the NCAA tournament. And so, you know, go out there, have fun, do your job, play hard. And, you know, let the chips fall where they may. The season is not over Friday at midnight. You know, we're just getting warmed up. So let's get better and let's compete. And selfishly as a fan, I just want them to compete. Like, I, I would love to see them play well. And if it comes up short, fine. But we got we got a lot of building blocks and we got a lot of potential that we can fulfill. I'm not closing the door on the team no matter what happens on Friday. Yeah, and that was one of the great strengths of the team last year. There really weren't any games where we weren't competitive. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we we brought it every night. And Hubert seems to be able to get that out of this team. And we do seem to play consistently. So I, I do think we'll compete, but this is a tough one. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough one. All right, go Hills. I'll uh, good to be back. Can't wait to, to see how the season plays out. Season two, baby. Season, season two. two. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully some people will will come back and, and listen again. Yeah, for sure, man. All right. Well, go Hills. We'll talk soon, and hopefully we can get on here and do a, a recap of, of a wonderful performance by our boys. Sounds good.